Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. I really just delayed that because I wanted to make Taylor look a little silly. <laughs> so, hi everybody. Thanks for joining tonight. I have a really fun episode, mostly because I get to drink some really, really good whiskeys and get to talk a little bit about them, which is kind of the whole point, right? So I hope you guys have all had a pretty good week. Um, I don't know where you are. I know that I personally had kind of a weird one. Uh, it was definitely amazing over the last weekend. I was out doing yard work and stuff. It was like 70. It was perfect weather for it. And then today it snowed like two inches. <laughs> so Massachusetts, it's a thing. So let me know in the comments or the you know live chat, what are you guys drinking along with me tonight? I hope that you pulled something a little special for yourself. Um, I want to talk to you guys, you all, a little bit about what I am drinking tonight. So, now one thing that's one thing that's interesting here, I guess never mind. So, um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the Glendronic. Now, what I have here are four bottles. Now, I uh, I, I belong to this like I guess you'd call it like a media list, where every now and then, um, depending on which kind of distributor is sending it out they'll say, hey guys, we have these samples of these things. Now, the Glendronic is a whiskey that I've only ever tried at a tasting, and I've never done an episode on them. Um, <laughs> I know what you got, Steve. <laughs> yep, I, uh, I've i never done an episode on Glendronic, so I had to do a little bit of research tonight just so I would know what the heck I was talking about. And I promise you, I will get to the Ralphie video that, that posted earlier this week. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. But I had to teach myself a little bit, which is great, because I'll teach you guys too. I would imagine that not all of you have had Glendronic before, and if you have, maybe you'll learn something anyway. So, this is what I this is what happened. They sent out an email, they said, we have these samples, does anybody want them? And normally, I, I don't always just take everything, because frankly, like, I, I try to be fair. You know, they only have so many of these samples, it sounds tempting to take them all, but then, you, you know, you... You have to do an episode or you have to do some form of media on it. That's the whole point. It's a media sample. And I would feel guilty if I had a stack of these things just kind of waiting to go. But this one seemed really interesting. And to be honest, I didn't know what I was signing up for. <laughs> I didn't realize what kind of quality whiskey I was actually going to be getting here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the four things that I have. Um, and if you want to follow along with me in the description below, uh, you can see exactly what I have here. So this is the first one that we're going to drink. And actually, I, I would love everybody's opinion here because I haven't made up my mind yet, even going into the stream. I haven't made up my mind whether I want to start at the youngest and go to the oldest and potentially be tasting the best stuff with a more uh, experienced palate of the night. Or if I just want to jump into like the best thing first and then maybe hop around a little bit. So I, I'd like to get your opinion on what you guys typically do. I know that I usually would start at the youngest and go to the oldest so I could kind of build an appreciation, especially for having this distillery that I don't know a ton about and get to experience their stuff firsthand. But curious what you guys all do. So youngest to oldest, having Tim tasted them, I'd end with the 93. Interesting. So that's the, okay. Well, that's, yeah, so that, that would be the oldest. All right, so let me talk to you guys about it for anybody who doesn't want to look in the description. So I have the 2008... Um, I'm, I'm not, eh, there's no way to, this is like a humble brag thing. It's more, I want to tell you what's on here. So they have the price per bottle and they also have the ABV and all this stuff. So I'll just tell you, cause these do get dramatically higher in price. So this is 2008 cask 3017, $120, 59.8% ABV. And, uh, I can tell you this one is an Oloroso, uh, it's aged in an Oloroso Puncheon. So then we have the 2005 cask 1928. This is $150. It's 58% percent ABV. <laughs> That's a typo, but it was on there. It's actually funny they did that to a bunch of these. Um, so this is a Pedro Jimenez. Then 1994 cask 5287, $415 per bottle. This is 51.3% ABV. That one is in a port pipe. And then lastly, we have the 1993 Cask 7102. This is $600 at 51.4% ABV. So, that one's in an Oloroso Puncheon. So I've got a good night ahead of me. I'm very excited. Uh, let's just check in with the chat real quick. Um, let me 
quick say hi to Steve A, uh, Sanctorum of Spirits, Spencer, actually, honestly, all of you guys. Hey, Eric Jacobson's here as well. Um, he's a guy I used to work with. Um, let's see. So oldest to youngest, then back to oldest. I don't know if I have that much. I'm also, I think I'm going to pour a very small amount of each one. And then I probably will actually hop around a little bit at the end, Eric. I think that's a, actually a very good idea. Normally I'd think uh, higher ABV last, but I don't think going from 58 to 51 will be too bad. I agree. Once you get over 50, it's kind of, I mean, unless you're going really, really high, it's not going to make a huge difference. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour the 2008. I'm actually, you know what I'm going to do? Even more so. I'm going to pour a little bit of each one of these. Mm. I'm torn between wanting to let them sit in the glass and wanting to be able to nose it immediately. So... I, I guess I'll, I'll just kind of go right to the glass and then I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time talking. I'll try to give them each like a minute or two to open up. All right, so I'll pour the 2008 first. I'm just doing a, a, a small little wee dram <laughs> of the 2008. Okay, so this one is the Oloroso uh, Puncheon. So this one is um, obviously sherry for anybody watching that doesn't know what Oloroso is. This is going to obviously have very fruity red wine type of, of flavors. And actually, when you, when you nose this, it smells candy. It smells very sweet, like extremely sweet. I will, I will actually probably put off drinking that for a, at least a little bit. Um, but the smell on that smells very much sherry. There's just no, no doubt about it. Now, the thing about Glendronic, as I've come to realize, is that they've, you know, they're another Scotch distillery that's been around for a very long time. However, they were actually, I believe it's the second distillery to get a liquor license in Scotch, uh, Scotch, yeah, in Scotland <laughs> after the, um, what was it, the excise, I wrote this all down. Where'd it go? My, my notes suck here. Um, it was the excise, did I seriously, like, just totally lose this? Oh, I was scrolled down a little bit. Um, the Excise Act. Yeah, I, you know, I almost guessed that. Whatever. Anyway, so Excise Act of 1832, uh, 1823. So they opened up three years later in 1826. And they were founded by a guy named James Allardis, which, if you are familiar with the range, the, uh, I believe the 18, yeah, the 18-year-old is named the Allardis, or Allardyce. I'm probably going to mispronounce some stuff, so just bear with me a little bit. Uh, they're located in the East Highlands, over near the... Um, Forg, the Forg Valley, uh, which is Glen, so Glen Dronick, right, is Valley of Dronick, right? So the Dronick River, I guess you call it stream, whatever, there's, there's a bit of water that runs directly through the distillery, and you can see it here. So they built the distillery right on, I, that's why I couldn't decide whether I wanted to call it a river or a stream, and that is a, not a mighty body of water. <laughs> so, but that is where they get all of their fresh water from. Very cool and, and kind of a good idea to build. I mean, that you can't get much closer than that. So, all right. Um, they were open for many, many years from, you know, like I said, 1826 through 1960 when they were bought by uh, Teachers and Sons Limited. Now, that is the same people that make Teachers Highland Cream. And they ran successfully until about 1996 when they mothballed the place. Now, the term mothballed has a very specific meaning when you talk about a distillery. And I realize the group of people I'm talking to, but not everybody knows everything about whiskey. So when you refer to mothballing something, you know, you, you typically assume, oh, okay, they close it. Well, that's not entirely the case when you're talking about distilleries, because distilleries still have a bunch of barrels that are just aging. And you're not going to just close the place. Like, what are you going to do with all your barrels? Maybe sell them off, maybe do whatever, maybe <laughs> have, a, have a hell of a weekend. But in this case... Mothballing a distillery just means that you stop production. You're basically putting it on life support and you might be getting ready to sell it or you might be getting ready to close it down, but not necessarily. You still have this location. You're still aging your whiskeys. That's not always the case, but that's typically what somebody means when they say they mothball a distillery. And so that's why you have, um, in 1996, they mothballed this place, but we have a 1993 and a 94 here. So kind of makes a little bit of sense. Anyway, so they were mothballed in 1996, and they reopened in 2002. So they've still been going again for almost 20 years, like 19 years at this point. So uh, I think that they're, they're there to stay. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Ralphie. 
But before I do that, I want to have a little sip of whiskey because it is, what has it been, 11 minutes and I haven't had a drink. Oh my gosh, that's long for me. <laughs> anyway, so happy Friday to everybody. I hope you guys all had a great week and thanks for joining on the stream. So let's, um, I'm going to just kind of do a quick little nose and a taste here. So it's opened up for a little bit longer. I expect maybe it won't be quite so candy, maybe quite so sweet, but it might be. So we'll see. It has come down just a smidge. Um, it's not overly candied yet. It's, it's definitely taking on more of the characteristics of a typical sherried scotch. Not a ton of malt in there, although it does give it a little bit of heft to the nose, just being with the malt. But now you're getting much more influence from, from the sherry cask. I, I would go into a little bit more descriptor, and I'm, I'm happy to. I'm getting, like, some raisins, and I'm getting some... Really, it's just, like, red wine. So, I guess... Yeah, I mean, to me, I'm getting, like, a little bit of a strawberry vibe going on there. Um, definitely some... some uh, not cherries. I, I always say raspberries when I smell this specific thing, but I'm not sure that that's as specific as I should be. Either way, red berries, red fruits. This is classic port smell. So this is the 2008. So far, off to the smell. All right, from the smell, seems like we're off to a good start. So cheers, all. Ooh, nice. Sorry, I was just reading Travis's comment. So Travis, actually, I believe you were my first member. Um, but Travis just told me that I gave him a good excuse to enter, sorry, open his Glendronach 21 Parliament. This is really good. <laughs> sorry. You, you guys ever have a sip of whiskey and it's not just, uh, I mean, obviously it's not just alcohol burn, but it just makes your mouth water. That is not a good place to be when you're trying to talk immediately after, because it's just like, bleh, you know, you sound like a uh, horse from whiskey.com. But uh, let me address that in just a sec, Travis. Either way, I'm glad you're here. So um, the taste on this is, it's, first off, it's, it's good, right? Like, let's just start with the basics. I like this a lot already. I am extremely excited to see where I'm going from here, because it's going to probably get better. And that's already a very exciting thing. So for those of you drinking at home, tell me what you're drinking. I know I kind of already asked, but let me know what you're drinking. Tell me if, you know, if you're trying something new, tell me a little bit about it. Like, don't just say I'm drinking, you know, Talisker 10. I'll just be topical for this week. Say like Talisker 10, it's got this like salty thing. It's a little whatever. It's like been a shitty week and I really want to, you know, I'm really getting into it. So with this, <clears throat> there are... Let's, let's start off with the sherry. The ABV on this is pretty high. What did I say? It was like 50, yeah, 59.8. So, I mean, that's, that's the highest that we are going to be tonight. Yeah, it's definitely the highest that we're going to be tonight. This pretty much goes right, right down the line as getting less and less, except the 94 and 93 are like 0.1% off from each other. Talking hard, but it's expressive. Yeah. <laughs> horse is awesome, Patrick. That was not a diss at horse. It's it's just a known a known thing. The lip smacking and such. Oh, Glendronic 26, 1993. So yeah, I mean that's 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 this guy right here. It's actually 27, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. Uh do, 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 do. let's see. 27. Yep. Um I can math. Anyway, so what what you're smelling or what you're tasting here is Almost like, almost like orange along with, hold on. That first sip is usually a little bit of a, uh, uh, like a, t what do you want to say? It's not good to go off that first sip, especially if it's your first drink of the night because it's just waking up your taste buds. So let me go ahead and have another sip. Mm. Mm hmm. Okay, now that, ooh, that's interesting. It has a, has a weird finish on it. Something so high ABV. I def definitely didn't want to add any water to these tonight, only because I have so little of it. If I had a bottle, I would probably play around with it a little bit more, but for the moment, I'm just going to have it the way the distiller gave it to me. So, the taste on this, although it's really, really good, it's not super complex. It tastes like a sherried scotch that's at high ABV, which, in my mind, is a delicious thing. 
some of the keynotes that I'm taking away, as I mentioned, are orange, a um, little bit, of, actually a lot of honey, a lot of honey. The aftertaste there, the finish that I mentioned, it was a uh, extremely tannic, which is interesting because th this is, what did I say? This is only 12 years old. So this hasn't been aging for a super long time, but it's really taken on some of the characteristics of that sherry barrel, but specifically the barrel. So um, anyway, all right. I, uh, I will almost certainly end up going back to these. I'm pouring them real light just because I, I want the ability to. Let's check the uh, chat real quick. So Taylor had a nice night last night after a couple rough days at work. Yeah, relate. Did a little Irish blind with my buddy. Nice. Picked up a JMO 18 Bow Street. Uh, that'll be one of my special occasion whiskeys. Very cool. Have you opened it yet? <laughs> Travis. <laughs> Love it. Um, so, all right. So Travis mentioned something, the, the parliament, right? That's the 21-year-old. Now, one thing that I kind of wanted to get into was was talking about the different bottles that they have, right? I don't want to go into all of them, but I just the I kind of wanted to do this live stream a little bit more like one of my episodes where I talked about the the distillery a little bit, um, and I wanted to talk about the bottles. So their core range is the twelve, the fifteen, the eighteen, and the twenty one, and they all have different names. Now the original twelve year that kind of speaks for itself. It's it's a twelve year old sherried scotch. The revival fifteen year. That's what we're gonna back. We're gonna backtrack to that and why it's called revival. The Allardus is 18 years, and that's named after James Allardus, who founded the the whole distillery. Now the Parliament. This is interesting because I kind of assumed it had something to do with, you know, getting the license when they were in the 1800s or whatever. But it actually refers to a. Uh, I'm just gonna read this colony, colony or Parliament of rooks that have been nesting in the trees that overlook the Glendronic Distillery for almost 200 years. So it's actually, you know, a bunch of birds. I did not know that. Um, I had heard that there was a parliament of, like a parliament is a, a type of category of like groupings of some type of bird. I forget what kind it was. Obviously it's rooks, but I think it applies to something else that's like dumb, like a turkey, like turkeys or something like that. Uh, but anyway, all right, let's go ahead and I'm going to have some water in between each one of these. I'm going to go into the 2005 cask. Um, what I would say, actually, just, just on first impression, this is delicious. I might be a little disappointed if I had paid $120 for that, but just barely. I do think that if I personally paid for that and I tried it, I would be excited to share it with my friends. But being a guy who drinks whiskey all the time, I feel like it should be a little bit more complex. Um, like a 12-year-old for, for $120 feels a little bit tough to swallow. I could see that more at like 95. Um, and I think I would feel pretty good about it. Oh, owls, you're completely right, Steve. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and do the uh, Glendronach 2005 cask. I'm actually gonna throw this up here. This is, boom. All right, so the Glendronach 2005 cask 1928. $150, 58% ABV. Is there another stream going on? I'm just noticing. I mean, I'm happy that all of you guys are here. I just uh, feel like 20 is less than I was expecting to have in the stream tonight. Well, yeah, I mean, this is 120 for the for the 12 year. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit expensive, but it's supposed to be kind of a collectible or it's... So this this is the first time that they've done this particular type of release in the U.S. And um, that's something noteworthy, I suppose, and probably why they're charging so much. Interesting. All right, so the 2005. So this is 14 years... Um, uh, that's the price that Glendronic is selling for that certain release. Eric is going as well. Oh, Eric is still going. He, he usually uh, he usually ends at nine o'clock. Uh, well, I feel bad. He goes from like eight to nine, doesn't he? Hmm. Yeah, cask bottling. Moving on. I thought you meant the. Oh no, not the regular twelve. No, the regular twelve is like like seventy bucks, I think. Um. All right. So move moving along. Hey wheels. Moving along to the two thousand and five. So again, Pedro Jimenez, uh, Punchion. Oh, he started at nine tonight. Damn it. How did that happen? Man. Well, I feel bad. Oh, well. I'm drinking Glendronach. 
<laughs> if anybody's over there, just let him know that, you know, like I didn't know he was he was going on at this time. He usually goes on an hour earlier, so it's kind of not my fault. Either way. All right, so that's opening up a little bit as I'm just kind of keeping it out here. So while I while I let this sit out here, so let me talk a little bit about Ralphie. So I, I found myself watching Ralphie's video earlier today. Uh, for those of you that don't know, he put out a video on Glendronic. I wouldn't say it's one of his, like, classic uh, Ralphie rants. It, it was, but it wasn't a negative rant. And he didn't really go... <laughs> yeah, exactly. He didn't really go off the rails. But this is kind of the, the summarization of what his video was. So Glendronic was purchased a little while ago. Um, by, I forget his name, Billy, Billy something. I wrote it down here. Billy, Billy Walker. So Billy Walker is the master distiller at Glen, uh, <laughs> Glen Ellicky. Jeez, I almost said, uh, what was it? Craig Ellicky. That's, that's the one I kept having in my mind. So Billy Walker is, was, or is the master distiller of, um, Glen Ellicky. Jeez, I cannot keep this straight. He is a man who is obviously known for his ability to create whiskey, pick good whiskeys, and know a lot about whiskey. He bought Glendronic. He started putting out some of their best stuff. He started identifying their best barrels, putting that out as the, as the, um, just the regular bottlings, and Glendronic started getting more of a name for itself. And because of that, it started getting a lot more attention. People were buying up the 15 year specifically. Apparently it was very, very good. I have never had it. Um, the, the next Glendronic releases have Billy Walker's names on the tube. That's even better. Um, so with the 15 revival, I don't know this for sure. Um, but based off the timing and everything, well, actually I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. So Billy Walker buys the place, starts putting out a whole bunch of good stuff, kind of drums up the you know stock price of the distillery and Brown Foreman, Diageo, et cetera, start looking at Glendronic a little closer. Brown Foreman ultimately buys them. And now, just I believe last week, they announced that they are no longer going to be marking their bottles as chill filtered, which is important, um, not only for the potentially, uh, okay, not only the potentially um, different taste that you might get on, on your bottle, or on, your, on your whiskey, because frankly, I, I do think that there is a difference. I don't know that everybody can taste it but it, it speaks to the quality that you're looking to put out. Additionally, the, the 15s that they were putting out and the 12s and, and whatever else, they were doing that whole, let's not just put out like 15 year old, let's throw like some 19 or 20 in there and make this thing absolutely amazing. Call it the 15 so that the pieces or the, the bottles that people can buy at lower prices are incredible and they'll start thinking better of the distillery. It's a great business model to drum up the price of your of your distillery for sale, not to maintain long term. Because if you're wasting, well, wasting, if you are using older whiskey, you're gonna run out of your older whiskey a lot faster, right? So this happened, Brown Foreman bought them for about 65 mil, which insane, and that is kind of it. They started saying that they're not gonna chill filter stuff anymore, and they are essentially really kind of killing off the name that had just risen. We're going to have to see what's going on with Glendronic. And so after I watched that video, I actually just started thinking about this and I was like, oh, well, luckily these are all pre that, but it would be interesting to see what the Glendronic 12 tasted like a few years ago versus the ones that they're selling today. Um, you don't remember Ralphie saying contract in that Glendronic video. What do you mean by contract? I'm, maybe I maybe I said the wrong thing. I'm not sure. Only the well acquainted can really tell much of a difference between the chill filtered and non chill filtered. I would agree, and I do think that um, I do think that if unless you are having them side by side, I don't know that you would ever notice. But the the one thing I will say is that I've had the opportunity to have two side by side. One that was chill filtered, one that was not not Glendronic. I, I genuinely don't remember what brand. And there was a viscosity difference that I could notice, but that was it. It was not a flavor difference. So I don't really know. I, I kind of personally don't have much of an issue with, uh, with um, chill filtering. I have, a, I have an issue with coloring. I don't have an issue with chill filtering, but 
I totally get why others do. I feel like to put something on a shelf and make sure that it sells because it doesn't look a certain way is important. But I feel like once you go to the point of adding color, that's, that's the step too far for me. I feel like that's adding something wrong versus removing something that you just want to get rid of. It's, it's a minor point, but that's, that's where I stand on the whole thing. Anyway. All right. So this little bad boy is opening up quite a bit. It's actually having a lot of different notes than the, the uh, 2008, which makes sense. It's a different type of sherry. Um, it does share that candy sweetness right at, at first, but it's, it's a, a heavier nose, heavier scent, more along the lines of, what is that red wine I'm thinking of? Not sherry, but um, Shiraz. Shiraz. So where Shiraz has kind of a heavier peppery note, sherry tends to have, you know, a fruit forward note. I feel like this is leaning heavier on the, the peppery side. So I would almost say maybe more like a, like a cinnamon actually than pepper. It's just smells a little bit more like it has a spice in it. Yeah, that's a good point, Taylor. Uh, he says the difference between selling to the masses and selling to the malt masses is E150, which is the caramel coloring that, that some people will put into their whiskeys. So Steve A says that I'm more concerned with chill filtering than coloring the way most distilleries handle color. Someone like Dalmore adding so much coloring is the exception. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason I haven't reviewed Dalmore yet. I have I, I have kind of a love-hate thing going with, with Dalmore. I feel the same way as you about that one, Steve. I like their port, tw uh, port finished 12-year-old. Uh, the regular 12-year-old I feel like is nothing special. The port one I thought was pretty good. Um, not fantastic, but pretty good. And I've had the 12 in the port sitting on my shelf for a very long time at this point because I just keep wanting to review them and, and not getting to it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, have a sip of this. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Ooh, that's, that's hot, um, ABV-wise. Wow. And that's funny because that's uh well it's only one one point eight percent less so yeah it's gonna be gonna be pretty hot. Um, the contract thing I was mentioning earlier was I guess he's putting that on the label. It's a contract between producer and consumer. Um, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> a very small amount of cover coloring to keep the batch consistent. Man, I think chill filtering makes a much bigger difference. Yeah, I I wish that there was a good way to to prove either way. Um, I thought a while back about buying some E150 coloring and just putting it into, you know, a glass of water with another glass of water, blindfolding myself and seeing if I could taste anything. Uh, I think that the Scotch Four Dummies did something with coloring. I, I can't remember. It was a long time ago. Um, and then I kind of got away from the idea because I was like, oh, they kind of did something with that. But I think I would still probably like to do a video like that. All right. Going back to the whiskey. Sorry. <laughs> I always forget to mute. <sighs> this is just, this is a very high ABV whiskey and I'm, I'm having trouble actually picking out a whole lot of flavors. I am getting, I can't tell if I want to say blueberry or blackberry. I don't think I want to say blueberry. It's a, it's a little bit tart, but it mostly sweet. It tastes a little bit like, like, you know how, you know how like oranges and lemons and whatever else, like you'd refer to that as having a citrus flavor. It's, it's a specific kind of acid and it has a specific kind of flavor. There's got to be something in like strawberries and other kinds of berries that is a, a common thread that gives a specific flavor that is then accentuated by the type of berry that it is. I mean, I'm, I don't want to say just like fructose because that's like in everything, it's, it, there's something else. I might actually, I might take some time and, and look that up because I feel like that would be a relevant note. You know, a lot of people say this smells and tastes like red berries. I even said that earlier tonight and you guys all know what that means, but I want to be more specific. Um, Scotch for Dummies and Whiskey Tribe have both tested it and you need to get a lot of coloring in before you can taste it. Okay. That's interesting. Using color to make whiskey look older is where, yeah. Okay. Hey, filthy McNasty. 
I feel like this one's maltier than the previous one. I'm also just feeling like I'm not getting a lot of nuance to any of the flavor. I I will say this one, I don't I actually like the 2008 more than the 2005 for the moment, which is disappointing. I mean, obviously it's like $30 more, but it could just be that I tend to like Oloroso more than I like Pedro uh, PX Sherry. I think I probably just need to spend more time with different types of sherry and maybe maybe that's an upcoming video just to really pound into my head what each one really tastes like but hmm okay hmm all right let's um not a whole lot more to say about that one I feel like I I can't believe I'm gonna say this I actually wish that they had made that a little bit lower ABV and I know I can lower the proof and maybe I'll do that on the second round here um, but I think the, the higher proof here is actually hiding a lot of the flavor. All right. <clears throat> How are we doing? Doing on time. Perfect. About halfway. So, let's see. Is there anything else I necessarily wanted to discuss? <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think I said this earlier, but just whatever. This is, this is the first year that these particular bottles are available in the United States. And... The only, I guess there's, I think there's 18 of these specific types of, of bottlings, um, you know, it's a specific barrel, whatever. And the only place that you can get all of them is actually in the distillery's tasting room. But if you go there, you can have the 18 different drams. <laughs> Although I'm not sure if they would serve you that many, uh, but it sounds like a fun time. All right, I'm gonna have a little bit more water. The, the ABV on that last one, I feel like might've been a problem. I do kind of wish, looking back, I kind of wish I had started at the end with the lower ABV. But as you guys said, like 50 to 58, not a huge difference there. All right, so this next one is 1994. So we are really, we are really jumping up here. Um, this is 25 years old, I believe. Yeah, 90, yeah, 20, is it 25? That's funny, because this one's 25, but 93 is 27. So obviously the months are mattering there. So this one's 94. $415, 51.3% ABV. So, I really hope this one's a lot better. Otherwise, I don't know. Yeah. Thanks, Taylor. Appreciate that. All right, I'm going to pour a little bit more of this one because I kind of want to spend a little bit more time after it opens up. So I want to take, take this one a little slower. Okay. So that one's port. <laughs> I forgot that this one was port. So when I smell that, I'm like, that is some funky sherry. But yes, all right. So it's ever, you guys ever, uh, you ever take like a sip of milk and think that you were drinking water? It's just like not what you were expecting. That's that's what just happened in my head. I was like, ooh, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> all right. So that's very, very different. Right off the bat, there's, there's a, hmm, what do I want to call that? It's not butterscotch. I don't think it's like a toffee. It's more like, it's not like peanut brittle. You know what this reminds me of? This, this is going to be kind of a weird one. A few years ago, the Patriots were in the Super Bowl. What? <laughs> so, all right, the Patriots are in the, were in the Super Bowl, and I did an episode on Super Bowl snacks that you can make. And I made, like, a bourbon-glazed um, pretzel. And it was really... It tasted a lot... You, you bake them, you cut... Pretty much you cover them in butter and bourbon, and then you just bake them, and it's like a glaze or something. I forget how to make it. They were pretty good, but they had this, this candy-like quality to them, where it was like... You know what? I know exactly what it is. It's like browned butter with um, a bit of that like pretzel to it, just on on the nose, which doesn't make a lot of sense for port. It should be a lot sweeter than that. But whatever. That's exactly what it, that's a strange recollection. I haven't had them since. Hmm. Shortbread. Interesting. 
Taylor's saying shortbread. Maybe. Maybe. Actually, you're you're kind of onto something, and I'm I'm thinking about it. Maybe like biscotti. Um, is is biscotti shortbread? I don't really think so. I think I think shortbread is like more of a cake, right? Like uh, what you have with like a strawberry shortcake, right? That's shortbread. Um, anyway, so this does actually kind of remind me of biscotti, including the chocolate. So that that's interesting on the nose. So Travis, you mentioned that you were drinking the 21. What do you, uh, or yeah, you, I think you said the 21. What are you thinking so far? Are you enjoying it? Sorry, I'm kind of going to the town on, on the smelling here. I, I don't know if it's me. The, the noses on these are not, they're not knocking it out of the park. None of them are bad smells. It's more of a, I guess I was expecting more kind of thing. Um, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, at $415 or whatever it was, I've got to imagine the taste is great. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So <coughs> cheers. Thinking. You know what I'm going to do? I wasn't expecting to do this. Where is my water? I have a little dropper. Give me two seconds. I'll be right back. I wasn't expecting to do this, but I feel like the ABV is killing a lot of the flavor here. And there's something... I don't know where the heck that thing is. I think I might have to just do it from my... Oh, there you are. Yeah, man. I don't even know where stuff is in this new studio I got going on here. All right, I'm gonna put like the slightest little bit of water in here. I feel like the ABV is, is killing a lot of the nuance. I'm just gonna do two little drops. Might add a little bit more. I have more of this, so if I screw it up, I can always, you know, I can always do it again. So I'm gonna give that a minute. Water is good. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm going to bring up a conversation topic that I, I was talking about uh, after my Talisker review that went out yesterday. So my next episode is going to be on Talisker 10 versus something. And currently what's at the top of my list is Highland Park 12. However, Highland Park 12 is a sherried whiskey and it's lower ABV. So I'm a little bit worried that it's going to just lose outright. Excuse me, like even in my head already, I think I kind of have a bias towards the Talisker. So some people have suggested the, the um, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Lechag, uh, Lechag 10, I think it is, and the Jura 10. And I'm curious what you guys think, or if you have another, ex uh, another suggestion for something that would be a really good versus between Talisker 10 versus something else. The Oban uh, 14 came to mind, mostly because of the Maritime Notes. But Oban's not really peated. I think it's like very, very low peated. Um, so maybe not a good comparison either. But I don't necessarily want to go to something like a Laphroaig 10 or an Ardbeg 10 either because I feel like those are a whole different ballgame. So I guess what I'm looking for is another medium peated whiskey that might be a little coastal that might be a good comparison video. And the, the Jura 10 might be an okay choice, but I'm just curious if, if any of you guys have any other suggestions. See, people said Kalila 12, and, and I've had Kalila 12, but I remember it as being smokier. But maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't think I've ever owned a bottle of Kalila 12. Yeah, Talisker versus Lechag. So this does smell better after it, uh, adding the water, as, as it would. But I just kind of didn't want to do that right out the gate. I'm maintaining that biscotti note, specifically with with the chocolate on it as well. I'm thinking that I'm thinking that brown butter note is is less so. But what I'm not smelling in here is the port, like almost at all. I'm a little surprised. <laughs> I 
You know, Jamie, that's actually really funny. <laughs> All right, so the, those two little drops of water made a difference in the taste here. It, it very much did, actually. That doesn't make... I mean, I know it makes sense. I have very little in here, too, so two drops of water is going to make a little bit of a difference, but very little. Either way, it cuts some of the burn, and I'm able to get a little bit more of a nuance out of here. And what I'm picking up now is not an oiliness. It's... Sorry, that's probably a little close to the mic. Um... I have some of the notes from from the um, from the distillery here, and and I'm looking at them. I'm, I'm reading the the palate taste: walnut and black truffle with lingering toffee, cocoa, and dark bramble fruit. Which I just don't agree with most of that. Like I know I, I mentioned toffee at first, and then I kind of was just like, no, it's not toffee. And I still maintain I don't think it's a toffee. Although I guess I guess maybe brown butter like could kind of be that, but like bramble fruit. This is another one of those terms that I'm like, okay, bramble fruit. Like, come on, it's. Like call it a blackberry, <laughs> or call it a call it a raspberry. Um, anyway, what am I tasting here? Hmm. I'm truly not sure. It's it's starting to to change a little bit on the taste to move more towards that port finish, but it's not as heavy on the. This, I hate to say it, like, I don't know if it's me. Maybe I'm having an off night. I I don't really care for this one at all for the price. $415 should knock your socks off. I've only had one, two. I've only had two whiskeys that were that expensive. Um, and both of them were were extremely, extremely good. Um, one of them was, was more expensive, which I'm actually looking in my head to compare it to, was the old Pulteney uh, 1983. That was about $650, so the, the next one, the $600 one, is probably going to be in my head. Especially because the, the old, uh, old Pulteney 1983 was sherried, like pretty heavily sherried. So, were you going to do that Glendronic 12 giveaway? Just curious. Did I mention that on the, on the stream um, or in the, in the chat? I was not sure. Frankly, I, I mean, putting this bluntly, I, uh, eh, hold on. Was I going to do that? I must, I must have put it in the stream if you, if, all right, Taylor, did I, did I put that in the description? If, if not, then I, I kind of would rather do it another night. I was, I was expecting more, more people in the chat and, you know, like it's fun to do a giveaway, but I can't lose money on it either. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, we'll see. I probably not. So I'd rather, I, I would almost rather just do that for like, like a Patreon giveaway or something like that. Um. Oh, I did mention the weekly video. Okay. Ah, stupid me. <laughs> oh, the the Patreon weekly video. Yeah, you know what? I'd rather just give that away to the patrons or something like that. Um, we'll we'll do, we'll figure something out. So, anyway. Going back to this. So the port is kind of opening up a bit. It's I just have nothing I have nothing to say about this. I'm striving, right? And there's just not a lot going on there. I feel like these are very one note, and I just don't know why I, I'm not getting more. But it, if it's not there to be found, what am I going to do, right? Uh. Mm. Mr. Sparkle. <laughs> like, uh, like Homer? Like, Mr. Sparkle. <laughs> Man, I miss old school Simpsons. Good stuff. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's move on to the last one here, because then I can kind of go back to it. I will say, I'm not sure if I like port finished. I like it sometimes, but I, I tend to like sherry finishes more. Um, what I'm really into lately, I've come to realize, I've had it a couple of times recently, is cuvee casks. Those are interesting and new. Oh, yeah, drop that, that's fine. All right. Ooh, that is dark and thick. Thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. Now, I don't know if you guys can see. Look at that. Yeah, let me let me put that up against the head, right? Look at that color. Now, compare that <laughs> to the 2008. I love using my pasty white body for, for a uh, whiteboard. 
I really should just have a white piece of paper, but I think that's funnier. Anyway, all right, so I need a little bit more water. My tongue's feeling a little bit fried from the ABV. Yeah, I'm with you, Taylor. He, he's saying that um, he has a Talisker Storm, and he's not sure what to compare the Talisker 10 to. But, yeah, it is just a unique note, and that's kind of why I'm having trouble pinning it down. But I, I think if I can't pick anything else, I'm going to try the Jura and see if I can make something of that. But if not, I'm just going to do the Highland Park 12. Um, it just, for whatever reason, it sounds right to me. Now, one thing that people have suggested is, is Johnny Walker Green, actually. And it's been a long time since I've had that. I'm going to have to go back through my notes and see what that's like. I don't currently have a bottle, but I wouldn't be against picking one up if that was, if that was worth it. <laughs> Taylor. All right. So let's go ahead and give this a, a nose. So this is 27 year old, um, 51.4% ABV. There is only 633 bottles of these and, uh, Oloroso. All right. It's reminding me of something. Hold on. I think I know what it's reminding me of. I'm keeping this under the desk on purpose, so if I'm wrong, I don't... If I'm right, I'll, uh... A little bit. The, uh, Anok 18, that I still have yet to finish, because I really don't want to, because it's super good, um, has a little bit of that to it, but then a little bit... A little bit, uh... heavier in the sherry. Let's see. It's almost like a pruney flavor, uh, nose. Vanilla, cinnamon. It's... What am I getting out of this? Sorry, I know this must be very exciting, but I'm just I'm trying to pick something out. And I really can't tell if I've just should have started over here or not. I'm really thinking that I should have. <clears throat> I'm going to try that little trick where you smell your arm to like kind of reset your, your nose. I really thought so too, Jack. I, I thought it was going to be no problem to get anything out of these. Um... None of them are bad. I do just want to say that. But when you're dealing with this kind of value, like or this kind of price tag, it can't be not bad. It has to be incredible, right? You can buy a lot of whiskey for $600. Now, some folks might say that my, my palate's unrefined. Whatever, it's fine. I've been doing this for a lot of years at this point. Like, I, I don't think it's unrefined. I just think that there's not a whole lot here to find. I mean, there's there's like a dark cherry thing kind of starting to come through. I, I don't want to add water until I have a sip. So let, let's go ahead and have a sip of this. So cheers, everybody. I wish I could be more excited. Like, all right, get myself hyped up. This is this is a very expensive whiskey. I've been looking forward to this all week. Whew. All right, here we go. I hope it's good. Cheers. Hallelujah. Finally. All right. It's good. Thankfully, it's good. Okay. Now we can start dissecting this. Okay. That's really good. That's still... Oh, thank, thank you. Like, so happy. All right. The rest of you guys kind of disappoint. This one is good. All right, so what this is doing for me right now is very sweet raisins. It's black cherry, black black raspberry, black raspberry? Yeah, black raspberry. All very fruity stuff. Hold on. Mm. Okay. The ABV being cut on this one absolutely makes a difference. Um... 
So Jack, I'd, I'd like to know what, what is your three bottle uh, dream list? Um, oh, the f finish on that just lasts forever. It's so mouthwateringly good. And I'm trying to pick out anything to tell you about this. It's, it's kind of, no, not banana bread. It's, excuse me, it is sugary syrup, sugary like, sugary like cherry syrup. Like almost like a Luden's cough drop, but a little heavier. But the, damn, those things are good, right? So, um, then finish is very dry. It's it's really really drying out your tongue there. Uh, it must be from I mean it's it's been sitting in a barrel for a very long time. So there must be some some tannins going on there. Really kind of actually, is there like stuff in the bottom of this? A little, little tiny bit. Cool. Um, not from the bottle. Going to stare at the Barora Thirty Seven tomorrow morning. I like to visit it once a week. <laughs> um, how much is that? Lost cause. Mm. For those of you just joining, um, so I'm currently having the 1993 Glendronic, 51.4% uh, ABV, uh, Oloroso Puncheon. This is this is very good. Is it $600 good? Hmm. There is a question. If I were to share this with my friends they would all be extremely impressed and probably feel like they, they got it. I don't think it would drive anybody away. I think even some of this, and forgive the generalities, but I think you guys can all probably relate, a lot of the wives that don't drink whiskey, I think would try this and say, this would be one of those that they'd be like, oh, that's not bad, right? I thought it was gonna burn, right? So this one's very good. And it's very, it's, I'm just like all over the place here. It's, I'm trying to pick out anything detailed and I just can't, but in this case, there's a lot of fruits going on and they keep kind of coming up every couple seconds, something, something different's happening. Like now I'm getting orange and that, <sighs> Sherry's just great. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. So a bit shocker on my Glendronic 18 flight, 2021. 2016 in second, 2019 in third. Interesting. <laughs> so 2020, I want, I mean, this whole, this whole chill filter thing that just, it's just happening now. So I would imagine it, it hasn't been going on for very long. So it's, uh, yeah. Have you had Tamdu, Batch Strength, or Abunda? Um, how's tonight's lineup versus those two? I've had the Tam, uh, I haven't had Tamdu Batch Strength, actually. Uh, have I had the Abunda? I believe so. Here's the problem. I try a lot of whiskeys when I go to these like road shows and I just don't remember anything about them. <laughs> I kind of just write down like, oh, I liked it, you know, like look into this one, go research or whatever. But, and, and it very rarely does it say like, don't, don't bother with this one. Um, Glendronic 18, 20, 20, yeah. So you like the younger ones. <laughs> Steve. Or Christine, you got him. That's good. Mm. This one's wonderful. Is this worth six hundred dollars? Twenty twenty is the bottling year when it goes back to potentially only being an eighteen year. Twenty nineteen bottling is actually twenty four plus. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, to me, six hundred dollars is a lot of money, and I I try to think. Would I be disappointed if I spent $600 on this? Well, let, let's add a tiny bit of water to this. Let's see, because I, if I owned a bottle of it, I would absolutely end up doing this. Although I will say that at the 50%, this does not really need water. Um, unlike, you know, some of the higher ABV ones over here, really kind of deserved it. Man. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this quite a bit. All right. Hmm. Ooh, 
Ooh, that's interesting. The water made a, a bit of a difference in the flavor. Actually, for, for the worse, uh, which is interesting. It's leaning more heavily towards that prunish kind of, I mean, is, are candied prunes a thing? Um, I guess so. You know, like dried, I guess you call it dried prunes. It's not a thing I've had for a very long time. But it, it's, I, I'll just go with raisins then in that case. I feel like it's, it's like a raisiny taste, but it's going heavier that way with the added water. Figure how long the uh, enjoyment will take and convert the bottle cost to an hourly rate. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a fair point. This bottle would, it, with a bottle this expensive, I would be inclined to share it around with everybody I know. So it would not last, last me very long, but I love to share my whiskey. <laughs> so I actually, uh, I just had a, a cocktail night um, Wednesday. It was, it was pretty awesome, actually. It was, some of you that, that may have seen the stories would have seen. I did this really cool thing. So, like, some buddies of mine, they, they came over. We do, a, a like, a dad's night every, one, uh, every other Wednesday. And we all take turns hosting. So, I did this thing. I said, all right, I'm going to put out directions and all the ingredients to make whiskey sour, a man, uh, sorry, an old-fashioned, and then a, a Manhattan. And I walked them through how to make it themselves and let each one make it. And then we all had them and sat around the fire and, and just loved it. And it was very fun, you know? And, like, so I would just, especially now that COVID's kind of starting to come, hopefully, to to an end. I uh, just got my shot on Wednesday. Then, you know, it, it's something worth thinking about. Don't just have a whiskey tasting. Try to do, like, fun cocktails. And, and what worked really well for me is I printed off, like, a picture of what it looks like and then directions of how to make it in the simplest words that I could find to, to do, you know? And, uh, and that helped a lot. I felt like that really actually made a difference for these guys because they would look at it. I'd be talking them through it, but they'd, they'd be reading it and it worked out really well. Anyway, back to the Glendronic. I'm thinking, yes, I'm thinking that if I, if I wanted to spend $600 and that, that's more where my problem is, is putting myself in the frame of mind where I'm about to go spend $600 on a whiskey. I almost bought, what was it? The Redbreast 32, I think. Um, that just, that came out, it might've been 27. I don't think it was the 27 though. It was, they only had very, very few of them. And it was like earlier, it was like midway through last year, I think. Um, I could be wrong. It could have been the 27. It was about $450, uh, after a while. I had the opportunity to buy it for 400 and I was really on the fence about doing it. And I ended up not doing it. And then almost like a week later, everywhere had it for 450. And I'm just like, crap, I should have pulled the trigger. Um, but that's the thing. I can't put myself in the frame of mind to spend that kind of money on a bottle of whiskey. It's, I, I look at this more as how many bottles I could get that are of really good quality versus like in, incredible quality. And maybe like once a year, I'll treat myself to something crazy like that, but it, it doesn't happen often. So just got my first COVID shot today. I have no signs of autism yet, but I can't say the same for some of my coworkers, even though they showed the signs before their shots. Yeah, man. Well, you know, they got the 5G running through their veins now. Uh, the red bottle, that's 27. The 32 is the 32 is the Dreamcast, but they do... It, it must have been the 27. I think it must have been the 27. Because the Dreamcast, I know that they do want to... Or they did... They've done two of them now, I think. Or maybe a couple more. Um, you're right, though. It, that wouldn't show up on the shelves. You'd have to find that. I remember, actually, they, they had that available on the website somewhat recently. And you had to, like basically enter a lottery or, or be one of the first ones to sign up or something. So you're, you're probably right. It's probably 27. All right. So putting myself in the mindset of $600 for this bottle. I think this and surprisingly the 2008 are the only ones that I would actually consider buying. But the 2008 cast strength for 120, that would be, that would be a curiosity purchase more than it would be feeling like it's totally worth the value. Um, but the 2005 and the 1994, surprisingly, just aren't my thing. I think the 2000, uh, sorry, the 1994. I think the 1994 would probably be some other people's thing, but I wasn't crazy about the port. Mm -hmm. I did, Steve. It was definitely the 27. Yeah, and actually, as this thing sits, this is getting better and better. The, 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 uh, 93 would be what I would suggest people get if you were in that kind of a market. If you're not, and you wanted to pick up a Glendronic, honestly, if you've never tried it, start it. Start at the 12 or start at the 15. Um, I suspect the Revival is probably still available on pe on people's shelves. Uh, Ralphie, you know, kind of was making a big deal about that one not being available anymore. But 
He's probably right, but I got to think that you could probably find a Dusty of some of the older stuff hanging around. Anyway, all right, so we are just about time. I know uh, a lot of you guys, or maybe some of you guys, are going to probably go hop over to ADHD stream, and that's that's totally fine. Um, but I appreciate you all joining me here for this. This was uh, something I've been looking forward to all week. Interesting results, very different than what I was expecting. Uh, but I'm happy to happy to say that this, you know, this at least some of them were good. <laughs> I don't know. I really was expecting tonight to be just like an absolute dream, like walking on walking on air. Uh, but it is what it is. At least, at least I'm honest, I guess. Anyway, all right. So look forward to another episode uh, next week. I will not be doing a live stream next week. I have a software release on Friday night at like 9 p.m. So um, timing is kind of killer. I, I just can't find a good slot that works for me every week. Anyway, so I won't be doing a live stream next week unless I can find some other day to fit it in, in which case you guys will hear about it. But plan on me doing one the following week. And I hope to see you all there. So... Thank you for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary, and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Cheers.